here's a new phrase. I've just taken a live today, but anyway, here's a new phrase. Um, yeah. Um, I love you to bits, man. But like, I'm gonna coin this phrase today. This is the moment a man brazenly brags about murdering his friend in cold blood on a TikTok video. Leading up to this moment, the TikToker in question had posted a series of disturbing videos to his audience of thousands. In them, he dropped hints as to what he was about to do. However, the audience were none the wiser. Ultimately, his confession followed. Come with me as we take a deep dive into this horrific case and attempt to answer one question that continues to remain a mystery. Why did a TikToker murder his friend and then make TikTok videos about it? She used to work for me free of charge on my market stall, selling pillows, blankets and bedding every Wednesday. I really appreciated her help and enjoyed her company. She was a bit lonely, I think, so helping me on the stall for a few hours every week got her out of the home and out meeting people. She was great with the public. I think it helped her mental health. This is how Robert Church would describe his friend, 68-year-old Sabrina Cooper, the niece of the famous magician and comedian Tommy Cooper. Sabrina had been known in her local area because of her family ties. The fact that she ran the Cooper's Magic Shop, a fancy dress, accessories and magic supply store on a high street in Eastbourne, England, and walked her dogs along that same high street. That's how I got speaking to her. I sort of met her dogs first and then her because she would walk them three times a day around the back of the cafe. If I was out there having a break, we'd chat. She had a Jack Russell and a little white terrier. Sabrina's father, David Cooper, Tommy's brother, had initially opened the store in Slough way back in the 1960s, but decided to relocate to Eastbourne some years later for reasons currently unknown. Eastbourne, for those of you who aren't aware, sits in the southeast of the country. It's close by to Brighton. When the move was made, Sabrina took over the family business, and for years, it was booming. I mean, who doesn't like the old trick or two? Plus, it had Tommy Cooper's stamp of approval. However, in 2017, Sabrina had to shut up shop, as she never made the internet transition. She opted to keep things traditional. With the rise of sites such as Amazon, small business owners like Sabrina, who didn't make the transition over to the internet, would see their businesses ultimately collapse. The last five years with the internet has destroyed all the independent shops. Everyone goes online now or shops in superstores. It's been a family business from 1960 up until now. I was busy. It was fantastic. I had six to eight staff. Now it's just me. It's soul destroying. When my grandchildren grow up, there won't be any magic shops. It's so sad. It's the end of Cooper's. Everyone knows my shop. To be destroyed like this is not very nice. I'm going to miss all my customers. I've had some come in crying because I'm closing. I've had so many tears. It's not fair. People should go to their low up. There won't be any magic shops and support them. Although Sabrina had gave up the magic shop, she owned the property itself. So she decided that renting it out would be the next business venture that she would follow. With the property being such a sought after spot on the high street, it's to no surprise that Seven Bone Burger Co, a burger chain, swooped in quickly to take over. Promotion posters were up in 2017, operations were greenlit later that year, but after just five short years and a COVID pandemic that brought the hospitality and catering industry to its knees, Seven Bone Burger Co called it a day with that specific branch, and so it was closed permanently in November of 2022. Sabrina had been recovering from an ovarian cancer operation around that time, and so she decided to sell the property in its entirety, the store and the home above, instead of renting it out again. That way, she could focus on her health away from the high street. Sabrina had no issues selling up, and just a month after Seven Bone Burger Co. announced they were closed for good, the property sold for £725,000, or $922,000. So, things started to look up for Sabrina. She had just received a huge sum of cash, her operation had gone well, and once she was fully recovered, she could move into a new home, in the countryside. For the time being though, she was to stay with her mother until she was back on her feet.
On the 17th of December 2022, Sabrina began boxing her belongings up, ready for the move to her mother's. But she needed a hand, and so she messaged her friend, Tony King, to ask if he could help on the 18th. The pair had met through a mutual friend at a coffee shop and developed a wonderful friendship throughout the years. After Sabrina gave up the magic shop, she turned to Tony to keep herself occupied. There was never any chemistry romantically there, rather Sabrina would do things such as cook him hot meals and lend him money from time to time as he hadn't had a job and struggled financially. When the pair exchanged messages on the 17th, Tony asked Sabrina if she wanted to go and grab a bite to eat. This time, it was on him. She thanked him for the offer but declined as she had already ate and signed off her message with this. I'll see you in the morning. We'll get some breakfast. On the 25th of July 2021, Tony King, aka Don Tony Official, would post his first TikTok video. Over the next year or so, Tony continued to post multiple videos daily on TikTok, creating not only competitions for his live streams, but also pre recorded content such as food reviews, comedy skits, reactions, and daily life videos. This helped push his page out, and at the peak of his career, Tony managed to gain. 11,000 followers. That's the best dad stuff ever. That's the best dad stuff. I wish I had that stuff. That dad stuff. You know, you know, pick them up and drop kick them. Especially when the rugby's on. Especially when it's rugby. Rugby World Cup. You've got to get your and you can drop kick him out of the window. Yeah, I don't have any. So I can say anything I want. Well, yeah, drop kick. <laughs> drop kick. Respect always, geezer. I'm just taking the. Um, I'm just making a joke. Rhetorical. Have you seen them videos? The meaning of questions. You know, the, 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 those ones that ask you questions. That, um, will you be my girlfriend? Um, if I follow you back, uh, or, or, or I'm watching Star Trek, and uh, what do you think? And those sort of like stupid, dumb questions, and they're not real questions, they're just rhetorical. Learn the word rhetorical. Rhetorical is a good for TikToks. So you have to use rhetorical questions. Stop being an idiot. Stop being a idiot and getting sucked up in them quiz questions and hanging on the words that people thinking that you actually think that like you because nobody, no. Shoot. Well, I've got a visitor tonight, and uh, this is my best friend in the world. It's my only friend in the world. His name's Matt, and um, I'd like you to meet him. Come on, Matt, come and say hello. He's a little bit shy. Um, Matt, come on, Matt. Just a minute, let me go and get him. Come on, Matt. Come on. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Yeah, come on. I just want to introduce you. You're my best friend in the world, Matt. Oh, anyway, here he is. Say hello to Matt. <laughs> Proper fact. Did you know, if you are a young person and you think, I want to be a clown, how do I become a clown? Well, this is fact. If you want to become a clown, you must paint your face first, okay? Get your own design. Once you've got your painted face, get yourself an egg, paint the exact face on there of your design of your clown, submit that egg to the clowns, clown society. Nobody can use that face that is owned by you. You become the clown of that. That's fact. Well, this is my first commercial and I've got to advertise Pringles Piri Piri Chicken Flavour. Let's give them a go. Smell good. It's a perfect shape for a Pringle. You've got the perfect texture of a Pringle.
but the piri piri flavour, it tastes like but you can live on it. So yeah, go out and buy some. Although Tony came across as a funny old man, that was all for the camera. The reality of the situation was that he was a bitter loner who was angry at the world. Tony was an angry, jobless, alcoholic loner who felt cheated in life. He hardly spoke to me, but when he did, it was always to air some grievance he had. He seemed pretty upset. Tony's backstory isn't known, so we don't know why he ended up the way he did. But believe it or not, he wasn't always like this, and at one point in his life, he was actually making a sizable income. According to one report, Tony had received a 10-year jail sentence in 2008 for importing Class A drugs into the United Kingdom. So yeah, he was probably making quite a lot of money doing that. The name Don Tony Official definitely makes more sense now. On the morning of December 18th, 2022, Tony King travelled to Sabrina Cooper's home. As you know, they arranged to grab a bite to eat for breakfast, and then they were to get on with the house move. However, when he arrived, Sabrina wasn't in, as she had taken the dogs for a walk. He wasn't waiting around for too long, though, because moments later, she arrived. What happened next caught Sabrina by surprise. Tony became aggressive and told her to get in the house, and so they quickly walked inside. About an hour later, Tony was captured on CCTV, exiting by himself. Not with a box in hand, but rather an orange plastic bag. So, what happened then? Was Tony nipping out quickly? Had they had an argument and he stormed off? What was in the orange bag and... Where was Sabrina? Well, all those questions would be answered just hours later. You see, Sabrina's daughter, Natasha, had been checking in on her every day to make sure that she was there to lend a hand if needed. And when Sabrina didn't answer the phone, Natasha went to go and check on her to make sure that everything was okay. When she arrived, she was met with a gruesome scene. I saw her lying on the floor in the hallway at the bottom of the stairs with her dogs around her. I shook her and shouted, wake up, but I knew that she was dead. Natasha assumed that Sabrina had ruptured the wound from her cancer operation and had ultimately fell down the stairs. But five stab wounds to the abdomen and chest were discovered by paramedics when they arrived, and so the police were called. When officers arrived at the home, they opened an investigation. The evidence at the scene suggested that someone had robbed and murdered Sabrina in cold blood because not only was she dead, but various items including money had also been stolen. Police and Natasha alike didn't have a clue as to who would have wanted to do this to her. As the investigation developed, detectives looked through Sabrina's phone and discovered that a man called Tony was supposed to have been with her at around the time she was murdered. When they searched the CCTV located outside of the property, it backed up this theory. Tony was there when she was murdered. This was their man. And so he was subsequently arrested at his home just hours later. When police searched the address, they found clothes stained with Sabrina's blood in Tony's washing machine, and the murder weapon was found underneath his bed. More disturbing evidence was about to emerge when his phone was seized and searched. On the day prior to the murder, Tony had uploaded a series of videos to his TikTok page. In hindsight, it's clear he was dropping hints about committing a murder. Watch out for my next magic trick. It's going to be awesome. After the murder had taken place, Tony recorded himself confessing to the murder. This wasn't posted to TikTok, but was saved to his TikTok drafts. 15 seconds. Well, the best thing I've done today is, is, is actually... Nobody's n not gonna have an inkling of what I've done today. Here's a new phrase. I've just taken a life today, but anyway, here's a new phrase. Um, yeah. Um, I love you to bits, man. But like, I'm gonna coin this phrase today. When Tony was interviewed by detectives, he told them that he had been carrying the knife in his pocket for his own protection because he had been having trouble with a neighbour and didn't even know why he stabbed Sabrina.
All of a sudden, the knife came out and I just thrust it into her. I took her life and to this day, I don't know why this happened. She had done nothing wrong. It wasn't intentional. I hadn't planned anything. Tony would go on to be charged with the murder of Sabrina Cooper, but initially he pleaded not guilty. Instead, he pled guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter by diminished responsibility. However, after a medical examination determined that he was fully competent, he decided to plead guilty to the murder charge. In June of 2023, Tony King was sentenced to life with the minimum term of 22 years. This case was described as motiveless and senseless by investigators. After they accepted that for whatever reason, in the heat of the moment, Tony murdered Sabrina in cold blood. But taking one look at the evidence, the TikTok videos, the robbery, the fact that Tony messaged Sabrina 40 minutes after the murder, where he asked if she was okay, covering his tracks, it showed that there was at least some kind of plan. It's hard to give a specific motive, but hearing how people have described Tony, I feel that because Sabrina had helped him out so much, Tony couldn't stand that she wasn't going to be around anymore. And if he couldn't have her and her money, neither could Sabrina. 15 seconds. Well, the best thing I've done today is, is, is actually nobody's not gonna have an inkling of what I've done today. Here's a new phrase. I've just taken a life today, but anyway, here's a new phrase. Um, yeah. Um, I love you to bits, man. But like, I'm gonna coin this phrase today.